A, will tissue culture make clones obsolete? I know the answer. I know the answer to that. Not yet. Not yet. Tissue culture is pretty damn cool, but we're also going to talk about how to keep your strain collection alive. There's different methods out there. Some are a little more tech than others and some are a little more efficient, but how do we do that when you start to like your favorite strains? Tissue culture, man. Petri dishes. Or, I don't know. I want to get into it because that's what I was thinking. It's hard to uh, keep a bunch of mothers. I was talking to JR Token about it. He's like, I got to be real selective about it. I just don't. People are uh, uh, want to uh, give him clones. He's like, I don't have any room. It'd be great to keep these in rotation, but he's got a couple that are his staples. So, yeah, how do you do it? When I got that. We're going to talk tissue culture, mothers, clone from clone. Uh, seeds, a little bit of interesting stuff there. Well, let's start. Let's start with tissue culture. You have a very good graphic here. Should we do the stages? Yeah, we, yeah. Can we check this out? I found this. In, is this an infographic? I believe this is a, a stationary, info, a static infographic. Wow. So what do you do? You're scraping the plant the same way you're cloning it. Mm -hmm. It's all about sterilization. I've seen a lot of the people that do this are mycologists can get into this because they're used to being super sterile. Mm -hmm. But I believe you're just scraping the cambrium layer, and I might be saying that wrong. Uh, but there's a little layer under the skin, uh, under the bark of the, you know, whatever you want to call it this layer where there's this, these life cells and you can use the right kind of nutrients to grow them into multiple plantlets and they are genetically clean. Mm -hmm. They, you know, you can, the hop late, latent viroid is out of them and, you know, all that stuff and they come back genetically clean. Pretty neat. Be cool to just have some you know, testers to store these in. We're going to check out this, this shortly what inspired this was this girl doing a video but you're taking a node segment i do believe you want a leaflet with it not just uh the layer and then put it in an agar which is like going to be after it's sterilized your nutrient solution Graham, but then you click that, out, which, that that multiple i just want to see the multiple stages of it the other one just because it'll make sense okay yes dude i'm listening now um, and step three, inoculation. That's where you're putting them in your, your agar and then shooting and rooting, which takes longer, which we'll talk about like a bit longer than conventional cloning. Um, and then hardening off. So yeah, beyond this, uh, you, I don't know, did you find this video? This video was do it yourself tissue culture for $200 or less, which good on the title there. Good on the title. Who's the, the plants and jars content creator here. There you Got go. Out. So that's what, could you imagine being able to keep hundreds of different strains in jars? And I wonder if they would even can't to count towards your plant count. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it'd just be <laughs> neat to have like the strain collector. Look at those. That's Come cool. on. That is cool. Can you imagine if you go to your disc, not dispo, whatever, but the strain store and that's what it looks like. Hmm. That's a laminar flow hood, man. <laughs> no, I, isn't that the idea of that is it keeps on vacuuming so that you, uh, uh, yeah. it doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I don't. You know. have to have a stare. Yeah. You have to have a sterile environment, get a hood. She shows us how to make a hood and all this. I watched the video in, in dude's review. It's like, if you want to go for this, you definitely can. There's a ton more steps than cloning. Oh yeah. Um, reasons I'm seeing why you would want to do this are one, like sometimes people just like to geek out with growing and that's totally cool. Uh, if you've done mushroom cultivation, mm -hmm. you'll know some of the, you'll, you'll be familiar I, with sterilization. I was thinking the same thing, dude. This reminds me of growing mushrooms. Yeah. A lot of the comments, if you scroll down, a lot of the comments are mycologists being like, yeah, this is great. Interesting. Yeah, man. And after, like I said, until you get into a, maybe like a cooler storage thing, they will eventually root out within a month and you won't have to use them. Some of the issues I had, if you're trying this on your own, would be implementing, acclimating them more tricky. Like us, there's like three or four, no, more like five or six different steps. Think about these little things yeah. in a sterile jar. Yep. So at really high humidity, and of course they're gonna be really susceptible to all kinds of stuff being sterile. So the acclimation process, introducing them into the grow was a little bit intimidating for me. Um, and, but overall the benefits are for, I'm seeing mainly commercial facilities. Some people use, depending on the size of your facility, they have like a whole room and 50 lights to, dedicated to genetic storage. So That's when they cool. see somebody that companies that are offering up, oh, well we can do all this for you. And not only that, as long as you plan ahead and we're talking months, a couple cycles here, you tell us how many plants you want. We'll make sure they're all completely clean of viruses and pests. And they'll be ready to go for you at this exact date you tell us. But you have to plan. There's a lot of planning in that. But that's really cool. Yeah. I'm going to trade my freeze dryer for an autoclave, man. <laughs>
Wow. This is cool. And I, is this the future of cannabis? I mean, if, oh, that guy's waving to me. Hi. <laughs> uh, if, if you can, if you can uh, uh, go to a store, think about what a, a genetic store would look like. I mean, I guess you got to think of what a store would look like first. They don't have those anymore. It would look like but, this. It would be little plant yeah, bits and be jars. Yeah, like that. You imagine how many, I mean, like Philo's bioscience. Could you imagine if they had everything, just a genetic cop? I guess they maybe do a genetic copy of everything like that. It'd be freaking amazing. Wait, imagine if you could walk into a random place and know that you could trust the genetics. I don't get genetics. No, I, I go to the places that have cheap genetics. Amazing. I want it and I don't get it because I can't trust it. Yeah. And I mean, but this is neat because it cleans things up. Exactly. Well. So if you could just walk in place and know, oh, I can trust this. I'll buy it with 20 bucks in. Yeah. Yeah. The anyway. one thing that I thought was really interesting on it was they were claiming on uh, the ability to almost not eliminate, but just pheno hunts. I'm like, what do you mean? How does tissue culture have to do with pheno hunting? But uh, this is medicinal genomics when they'll do um wow. a genomic error key sequencing genomic sequencing you send it into a lab and this is just your your culture like i don't even think rooted like a piece of the plant that you want to know about and they can get you from that going against the data they already have chemotype determination gender of course and this is partial or full coverage uh for cannabinoid um synthase genes meaning thca cbda cbda so you can know what's in their terpene profile, flavonoids, flowering, seeding. They can tell you all this stuff as far as tissue culture and smaller plant samples. It's really helping in pheno hunts. We're at medicinal genomics here. And they got these things where they can do good, better, and best. Right. They're doing either a uh, SNP chip genotyping, DNA sequence paneling, or shotgun DNA sequencing. Uh, so wow. what is... The I genotyping of plants. You know, we just, I had to Google it, man. And I'm sure it's been explained to me the difference between genotypes and phenotypes. And what I got is a, a genotype is a set of genes that it carries. A phenotype is all of its observable characteristics, which are influenced by both the genotype and environment. So yeah. could phenotype, could that mean herm, uh, hermaphroditic potentials. I heard that's what us it, it would be all the recessive genes. So like, yeah, you have dominant and recessive genes. Dominant genes would be like, you know, the, the main like structure of the plant and everything. It's an indica, it's this, it's gotcha. that. And then the, all the recessive genes indicate, indicate the phenotype and that's all gen genetic stresses turn on different all genes. Right. Don't even make me Google the top one <laughs> whole genome. What is a future proof genomic profile? I don't know. But that, isn't well, that fascinating? Remember when they, they sequenced the human gen genome like 10 years ago? It cost like half a billion dollars or something. And now it's a thousand bucks. Oh, my God. It's insane, man. <laughs> whole sequence so genome. This is where they're able to find traits, man. Like this, I'm looking at the better. Strain seek for finding novel variants in key genomic areas, which they're talking about like Pest resistant. We know we have seen this, these genes, I suppose, to be pest. We can tell that this plant actually is pest resistant. This plant's going to be higher in T shaped THC. Wow. This plant will have these T, these terpenes. And this is all from a small plant sample. So, therefore, when you go through your room, you're going to be able to tell, okay, I should probably get rid of these, you get rid of these, and save just a lot of time in the pheno hunting, which we all know as growers, that takes years. It also predicts months, flowering years. time, how many weeks it will flower in, it will tell you. Pretty cool. Look, the, the last one, future proof genomic profile. I huh. Googled it and all I could find was things where uh, you go in and, and with the human, they sequence the human DNA and they find out if you have like future, uh, you know, markers for like uh, oh, cancer and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. And it's like these, I guess they have future markers. I don't yeah, understand. When that they'll suggest crazy. that perhaps you can, uh, and if you were carrying, maybe, oh, the baby's not going to be good. Maybe we could uh, take care of it now. And, uh, Wow, man. Interesting stuff. Super crazy. Yeah, I dig. Let's talk. Uh, let's move on. Let's say in yes, summary, sir. tissue culture is mainly going to be for commercial facilities. People are trying to store a large amount of genetics for the home grower or even for the up to all, say, like eight lighter. I mean, clones aren't that bad. We usually have the space for them. And that'll take us over to let's hit uh, let's hit on mother plants. Because being you talked uh, about JR, I believe in the beginning, talking about man, you can only keep so many mother plants in a room. If you're good enough as a grower to rotate mother plants and care for them as you need them and prep them for cuttings, I'll take it to a comment here because it'll spark some good uh, talk. This is um, actually off of DudeGrows.com from Doc's Browns, Doc Browns Green, Green Thumb, thumb. Oh, buddy. 
It says, as far as mothers, you can simply keep a small, say one gallon or less mother plant under a low intensity light, such as an HLG 65, which those are like 75 bucks. Um, and he's figuring veg about nine moms in a two by two tent. So I'm picturing not before we criticize on this, cause I'm thinking you might have some Scott nine, one gallon containers <laughs> in a two by two tent under a 65 watt light that will cover that two by two space for veg only. It says, why this would, would I, also why would I only... criticize that? And the only light, you know, it's just because you're the more light, the more flower, if you're trying to get big fat buds, but no, nice. I mean, I use a couple. I've used fluorescence over my uh, my mothers and clones before. Now, uh, also nutrition wise, this is where I'm going to have some questions from the DDC or whoever's listening. Uh, Doc Brown's Green Thumbs recommending um, using a lo longer feeding organic, like dry feed for like Bio Live is one from a down to earth organics where you can just do water only. It's really simple in there to water these nine moms. Um, you're going to want to be pruning them up, but then the timing thing's tricky because if you know you want to pull a mom, let's say. Be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to want to clone this mom next time. It's time to take it out, maybe get it out of the one gal, take a few clones off of it so you have it backed up, and then take that mom into the bedroom or another area to get big enough for vegetative growth to get your cuts and you're good to go. I have met another grower, shout out to Canna Cairo here in BC. He showed me his mom's setups, and he'd have some just like set way off to the corner where they're barely getting any light. I mean, what are you doing? This plant's mad. He's like, I know, but it's alive, and I'm going to bring it back in. Like oh, when I know I, like I need, I, every once in a while, I'll let it sit there, but he does, he doesn't need any aggressive growth out of it at all yeah. because he knows he's not using it for X amount of time. Yeah. Nature attacks the weak though, you know, or it you, could. that's what I'm saying. If, if you have weak plants, they're super susceptible to problems. Why not just uh, have a clone from clone from your solo cups? I can, I can keep a solo cup going for all right, hold on. at least you're, a month. You're, you're going to the clone to clone method, which I do want to talk about, but I want to talk about mother plant nutrition because I need some advice. I like to learn in public um, because we used to sell a fertilizer a bit at the store called mother plant. It's from uh, International Dynamic. I think the same company that makes Clonex. So I was like, that's that's marketing, man. Mother plant nutrient. Come on. Like yeah. who uses a nutrient strip, but we, oh, we have veg. growers that swore by it. What's that? Was, I'm sure you did, man. There's people that swear by a lot of stuff, man. Um, I'm sure it works. <laughs> But uh, uh, it's just veg nutrients, man. There's nothing well, this exciting is where I want to get some that. comments, but not not just veg nutrients. Maybe it says mother plants require a balanced nutrition, specifically formulated to slow down excessive vegetative growth and increase carbon to nitrogen ratio in the shoots. Now, here's the nitrogen. If a mother plant is fertilized with too much nitrogen, it will go quickly, quickly, but it will produce soft tissues with poor carbohydrate 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 reservoirs. So it says about 25 to 30 percent of the plant's energy is used to change nitrates into an organic form of nitrogen that's plant available. We know when we have a two nitrogen plant putting off a bunch of soft tissue, pests love to go after that. They'll, they'll attack it. They can if they're there. They're like, damn, this is great salad. So the question was the amount of nitrogen. Does any growers out there do you feed your mother plants different? Do you try to bring down the nitrogen versus vegetative growth, and how does that affect? Your ability. I'm thinking that you're going to root your cuts a bit quicker, maybe if you don't have a nitrogen rich clone coming off. So that's why I wanted to get the difference between just straight vegetative fertilizer and maybe how you're treating a mother plant nutrition. Since we're on moms, one more quick tip use some, in my opinion, man, use some air pruning pots, some fabric pots, air pruning, root prune, man, root prune those roots. They're going to be in there for a while. Um, and then also be using microbes, man. You want to take care of dead and decomposting matter, get those microbes working for you, taking care of dead roots and keeping the media, I don't want to say clean. Plus, let's say the no vacancy. Dirty. Bad nah, man, well. the opposite, yeah. man. Yeah. The opposite, clean, sterile. That's vacancy sign, man. Alive. It's wide open, it's yeah. Alive. It does make me super nervous about tissue culture, how clean it is when it comes out. Just like anything bad, I think, would party. I'm not advanced to know the best practice for that, but they must uh, quickly do something. It's like you're opening no, yeah, a wound. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think they keep them super sterile for a while. And that's where the, like the mycology and whatnot, the same with that kind of stuff. You got to keep uh, anything from getting in there and, uh, I don't know, and killing it. Yeah, you want to get the good stuff in there so it can colonize before the bad stuff has a chance. But I think you got to keep it completely sterile for a while for them to grow. I don't even think they inoculate them for a while. Mm, interesting. Since we just mentioned microbes, man, good time. Can we do a real grower shout out here? 
Absolutely, no, man. Real, Absolutely. You know got, what? What do you got? A real today? grower shout out is I asked Banner. I've been getting hit up for uh, a bunch of uh, people want to try the real buckets, and I think they'll be here in about a month, maybe. I don't know. I think they're being manufactured right now. So as they, uh, if, I think we might sell out on them. So we made ourselves a wait list over at Dude Grows. No, is it DudeGrows.com? I think it's at RealGrowers.com. Yeah, there's realbuckets.com and realgrowers.com. Yeah, yeah, going over to realbuckets.com. It'll yeah. get you there. We got ourselves a waiting list, waiting list. and well, there, there's a lot of people that are going to try these things, and I'm psyched about it because these are like miles above the, the three gallon and the five gallon. I've been testing these for I don't know a couple of months, and they just work better. They work awesome. I am super psyched to to release these. So there's a wait list over wow. realbuckets.com. You want me to uh, give a little preview here? Yeah, those those white ones. <laughs> those white ones there. All right, check it out. I'm going to pan down. Scott is a... Uh, Do we have some root shots? When I look at those roots, I am so psyched. There it they is. Look better now, man. Uh, the white guy, the, those white buckets, those are Real Buckets 2.0 production. That is, uh, this is first viewing on the internet right here. Yeah, like so I'm psyched it. about them. Like they're, I said, I think about They're beautiful, them the Scott. Way. They're beautiful, man. All they're, right. I Thank you, my it. friend. Thank you. Beautiful. Right around three gallons. Right around three, three gallons. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, it's so nice. So they a little less than the original version? Yeah. Uh, the original version was three and a half. These are like true three-gallon containers. Uh, so maybe a tiny bit less. But there's just something about the shape of them and the shape of the bottom that's just, oh, they're really, the roots are fuzzy and beautiful. And I couldn't be more impressed. Right. I dig. I dig. It's me tempted. See, this is where my grow anxiety, I kept, keep trying to like, what container am I going to be in? What's going to be the easiest? And then it's like, man, if I go with the real buckets and grow dots, am I copying Scotty and Grambo? We want some <laughs> variety, but man, I got to keep growing easy because going out of town is just a stressful thing when you have a grow to grow. You got the grow room, you got the grow tent, you got the yeah. nursery. So I'm just really trying to simplify that process. So shout out to Real Growers. Do simplify that process. Realgrowers.com. If you're in Canada, rechargecanada.ca. will hook you up with the dots and recharge. And sincerely, from a grower, it will make grower eat growing easier. Hey, uh, you know what? The clone method. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, clone the clone methods the way I keep mothers. Uh, it is a little bit dangerous. If you, you know, have some kind of a failure, you actually need to be in there. You can't go away from that. But... Man, just keeping solo cups. I clone. I keep a solo cup for a month. I clone again. If I want to keep that same strain going, not ideal, but having a bunch of mothers if you don't have the space is uh, difficult. I agree. It's another area to take care of for sure. Um, and if you have plants for a long time, there can be the potential of another area for bugs to hang out to spread to your other garden. I do like the clone to clone method. And I also just like a not a grow tip. Why do you need so many different strains? And people might be like, dude, there's a lot of good herb out there. <laughs> you know, but really taking the time to dial in with one is nice, depending on what you're doing with your harvest. You keep it all. Maybe you let, uh, you're, you're on the, 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 the free market out there. I'm really excited to grow the same strain out here for a bit, orange gasm, um, because I haven't gotten to know the same strain in a long time since I did. Is it Island Sweet Skunk or Sweet Island Skunk? Which one is it? Island Sweet, ISS. Yeah. Yeah, Island okay. Sweet Skunk. But you don't find that you get immune to the same weed? That you want to switch it up? You definitely can get used to it. I think that just makes sense with your endocannabinoid system. Yeah. Like familiarizing itself. It's re your receptors are like, yeah, we've been here. What's next? What do you got? Well, and on the subject of uh, phenotypes, I, I'm always bummed out because after my last grow, I had to tear it down. I had a uh, ethos. I had grown in there crescendo and uh, I had the cut. I had the orange syrup cut. Like it was the pheno. It wasn't a cut. I grew it from seed and I found the pheno. It was the most orangey, ridiculous and it's gone. So how did it go? I mean, yeah, well, I just yeah, I had to, you know, do my wife and the problems and paperwork and oh, I didn't mean to bring up painful and, stuff. Okay, no, man. not painful. It's, a, it's an orgasmic divorce. Uh, orange gasmic. <laughs> orange gasmic. <laughs> <laughs> Make friends in an area where other people grow. It's not always be careful. Herring and like, hey, can I keep my this plant over there with you for a while? Of course, always do quarantine. I'm pointing at you who doesn't listen to the show, who always has thrips. <laughs> um, <laughs> seriously, 
I don't even know if you should come over to the grow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you have friends that grow, or, um, it's, it's not bad, especially if something's fire you don't want to lose and they got room to keep something around. It's not a bad idea. Horticulture Lighting Group, baby. Let's talk about a little power horse in a good way. Not little in a bad, because this baby does 10,000 lumens with just 65 watts. The HLG 65V2, super efficient at 2.35 umoles per, per joule, if you want the text. What do I like it for is clones, man. Smaller mothers, anything you can do in a two by two space kicks butt, guys. Go to horticulturelightinggroup.com, coupon code DUDE, and you can just walk into the light. It's okay. It's okay. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, last one, Scotty, you had on here was seeds. Just wanted to make a point, kind of, that just because you got one pack of seeds doesn't mean you got that strain. I have seen no. you know, typical variations, do I say that, that are so different. I could not believe. Mm -hmm. I had to call the breeder. I'm like, dude, these two plants are so different. I think you got your seeds mixed up. But it can happen. Like it can, it can be very wildly different. Agreed. Well, we, it must be an F two man. We were just smoking on some of that. Uh, the what, what was that orange strain that uh, you got uh, the from? It won the DGC Cup the year before. JR Token just sent it to us. I know yeah. emergency. The emergency. emergency, and it was so different than what does. Uh, sorry to the uh, grower that won the cup. I don't recall. You're off the top of my head. I wasn't um, there. Hobbit feet. Yeah, uh, Hobbit, and uh, yeah, it's. I remember his was so much different than the JR, and it's that phenotypic expression. Same genetics. Whoa. Environmental stresses. Whoa, man. Mm. Like hey, it. man. If you're getting a, one more tip, if you're yes, getting sir. a clone, from, this just happened to me. Shout out uh, O-Cannabis. If you're getting a cut from somebody that's put in the work, you know, he's, I don't know, I think he said he went through four or five packs of seeds, which that takes a long time. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's a bit of time to go through that many packs. And I'm not saying that's a full pheno hunt or anything. Everybody's got their own opinion on that. But he found one that he liked the best. He, he knows it's stretch. Um, he knows, you know, the exactly the flavor profile he likes in it. And, you know, so it's like, he's like, I don't know. He offered, do you want this to stay in house? Should I not share it with anybody? Right. Um, of course, I'm going to get flour dilemma. back to you. But that's, that's all happened to growers. JR was talking about on the last happy hour, uh, as far as, you know, don't like let cuts get out without having the, uh, not the contract, but the bro shake on, um, is it supposed to go out at all? Or is it uh. supposed to stay with me? What are your yeah, that is interesting. It is an honor thing. If somebody, you know, somebody will tell you, hey, it's, uh, is it okay to give this out? Usually ask, right? No, they'll usually tell you. Uh, let me shout out, man. Let's take a quick break. Not a break, but a time to shout out some DDC producers like Arse, Arse Kickerson. <laughs> <Okay>. Nice. <laughs> uh, holy chronic, what's going on? Holy and chronic. F a plant count. F a plant count. Love it. Hang on. Got it, Scotty? I don't know. Just Arse Kickerson is absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Come on, two trees. Two trees. What's up? Two trees. And dude, you ever get those like terps? They're like dank, like like baby diapers. Oh man. Yeah, that's his name. Dank like baby diapers. That's their name, I should say. <laughs> Trichomes and T bones and baby diapers. Wow. It's a whole thing what going you on there, man. Get, what you get, a new one here, for $10 a month at dudegrows.com forward slash support is this show. You would not have yep. it without that. You guys stepping up and supporting it. Thank you so much. I can't tell you. I have a fellow YouTuber in the neighborhood that features. It's called The Story Till Now. Great guy. Great uh, Jeep adventure show. And the type of stuff he does not have to face, we have to face for mm -hmm. being in the cannabis, cannabis business is insane. It's like, oh, yeah, you never get age gated. You never get like... Yeah. How about pay? How about, <laughs> how about Dude Grows has never made one red cent from being on YouTube? Yeah. And awesome. so, yeah. Are they a big to? difference? <laughs> yeah. They so do people, give us a free damn TV station, all right? And, which is why we're endlessly appreciated. But to meet Dude's point, thank you, no, patrons, for no, supporting us. I'm not endlessly appreciated. I've, we've been completely <laughs> canceled. That was very painful. Very painful. By the way, uh, subscribe. Uh, but, you know what High C would tell us? Uh, it's YouTube's place, man. Play by their rules. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, play by our rules. Support what you believe in, especially if you help you grow. You had a laugh. Dudegrows.com forward slash support. Become DGC. Yeah. All right. Fall Prohibition Report. 
is where we're at, man. We are in California. California did not. They, 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 did we get shadow banned? They did not leave us a ton of comments <laughs> in California. We got a good one. From they were uninterested. Oh, yeah. give, give I like it. Four. Good, man. I'm glad. I thought we were shadow banned for a <sighs> sec, man. That is so cool to be shadow banned, isn't it? Yeah. It means you've made it. <laughs> That'd be a good t-shirt. Rasufa, what's up? DGC. You roll that J there. I'm going to talk. As far as the ability to get cannabis through legal purchases, it's off the chain here. <laughs> I can shop around to the dispos. A gram of dab that may be at $30 at one store might be $20 somewhere else. An edible that might be 20 here might be a few bucks lesser down the road. As far as a numbers game at Soup the Gardener, it's six plants, no matter where, in or outside, no matter how many people live in the house, huh. six plants per household in any stage. We're not talking six in bed, six in bloom, six plants. Sucks if you want a mama or you want to breed. I want both. Sorry. I keep up the current prop. Breed with mama. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Rasufa keeps with the current Prop 215 recommendations, which recommends, in quotation marks, I be allowed to grow up to 99 plants and possess up to 20 pounds. I be pounds. allowed? Is that, I don't do, I don't do that. It's another t-shirt, right? To be, yeah, I love it. Um, it says, I, I don't do that, but it allows me to be over six and have clones and mamas. In all instances, it is not allowed to be seen from other properties or the roads. I don't mind that necessarily, but I wouldn't mind seeing a front hedge of fine herb, but you're going to stink out your neighbors. I think they got to give you like that. <laughs> um, you will. They should give more of a, if you're, if you're rural or whatnot, because you know, herb stinks pretty bad. It ain't no joke. And not all of it, but you can, I stunk up my whole court when I was doing it. So, um, yeah. So the new, it says, uh, in all instances, it's not obviously seen. Okay. The new prohibition is coming from the industry against craft, heritage, and legacy growers. Whoa. They're backing the DCC and pushing regulate. What's the DCC? You down with DCC? No. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> no, what's up? So it's, uh, I, it, what he's saying is the legal companies that spend all this money at Wanaka, they want to keep the price up are fighting with free market people that we we're just talking about yeah. their, uh, I think we we're going to put it on next show, but I was learning about color remediation mm -hmm. and how that you can make, you know, dabs that come from outdoor or really low quality cannabis look really good by putting them through filtration and whatnot. Uh, you got to wonder if, you know, how low can it go as far as the market and if you really want to compete with black market when they can make beautiful stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is pushing regulations that only make it possible, like you were saying, for large industry companies to sell in the legal market. Right. Weed growers creating the new stigma of unsafe growers and product to remove the competition and increase their bottom line. It's scandalous. I hate that when they create stigmas. It's like, man, it's unsafe to buy from like maybe there's hardly uh, I shouldn't fully go there and say any growers using unsafe practices, but I find it to be rather uncommon. Oh, come on. There's tons of people that are spraying Avid and Fluoramite to get the harvest. God, I hope not. I guess I just block it out. No, you probably don't know any of them, but I don't know too many. But I don't think I know any. But, you know, what's Banner say? Check, check your privilege, right? Mm -hmm. We're in Colorado where it's everywhere. And if you miss a harvest, you're not, you know, it's, you can go to the store and get it or you can ask a friend. I think it's different. Yeah. yeah. Different in free uh, markets, man. Out of Cali, since we're talking to Cali, Scotty, I think you found an article that was in the Sacramento newspaper, how to clone marijuana the right way. Avoid I wasting just, your time or killing your plant. Yeah, I just thought that this was interesting that when I was Googling like how far <laughs> prohibition has fallen wow. in, Sac you know, in California, <laughs> that in the Sacramento Bee, I guess that's a local newspaper, <laughs> uh, they have how to clone marijuana. That's so cool. It's pretty hardcore, wow. right? I love it. Yeah. That's Maybe this inspires hardcore, the idea wow. of cloning marijuana. I read the whole article and I was like, that is one of the most vague articles on cloning Ew. Preparing the plant. Here, I'll just do an example. Preparing the plant. Cut off a branch about an inch or two long, making sure the bud top is intact. 
What's that newspaper, over. though? You know, it's the freaking newspaper. And they're cloning bud, budding plants. It is pretty cool. I don't know. I just wonder what's going on out there. Hey, uh, Sacramento Bee, that's monster cropping, homie. You need to uh, chill out with this cloning. That's device. next week, man. That's next week's headline. Monster <laughs> cropping. Don't break the trichomes while cloning. I don't know. I'm just saying it seems pretty mainstream out there. But no? it is, no matter what, it's super cool that they're they're trying. That's cute. <laughs> right. Good job, Sacramento. Hold down, Grambo. You see the rooting problem diagram i uh, think here it's uh yeah there we go common problems. problems one not making clones at the right time Two, somebody make it look like t- yeah somebody that made that infographic does not smoke taking weed. and this is gpt you know it because i don't even know what it means man. <laughs> taking too many clones that you is are, a problem though you are right i will tell you because I'm, I'm not a pro at it but reading stuff i've read articles that were written by it this does seem completely written by it. AI. Oh, shame on you. Vague. Shame on you, Sacramento Bee. <laughs> Sacramento Bee's not even going to be a real newspaper. It's just going to be this AI bot thing. Uh, yeah, Sacramento Bee. I'm cutting my oh. two half joints again. Oh, shout out, big word. Come on. It's, it's great. They taste way better, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, because you get harsh way through. I gotcha. That's, I've never thought of it like that because yeah. you have a smaller J to where. Yeah, yeah for people that no, if, if you didn't see last show, Scott rolls a joint with two crutches in the front and back, cuts it in half, and then has two dog walkers. Yeah, do they still call them crutches, man? I call them crutches. I call. I use sometimes filters. Do, then I feel crutches, outdated. Man. Yeah. Scotty says one joint, and here I have two. Uh, you cut a woman in half, bro. How'd you do that? Uh, Good stuff. Let's see. Now smoke, it yeah. is a good time before the comments to comment yourself. Like, subscribe, comment, man. Give me some info on that mother plant nutrition. I think Scotty thinks it's a little BS. I want to know. No, no. I, talk, right? Whatever. I just, uh, you hey. know, the, I, want, I, I like the idea of simplifying growing. And so I, I want, if you understand, you know, what a plant needs or if you understand what, I want people to understand what they're doing. So when you just say, all right, well, I have a mother plant. And if you go to the grow store and they go, well, you need mother plant bottle. And it just bums me out. I don't want to see that. That's not what I like, man. You heard you. I opened my cabinet, Scotty, when I thought for a moment, I thought I might buy that. And I opened my grow cabinet. Mike, you promised yourself you were going to take care of this and work your way through this shit and not get any more. So it's like, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Hey, let's shout out to uh, DDC merch, guys. Hook it up. Get the hats. Alpine hemp with these dope ass hats. Yeah, Gramble's got them up. I love um, we also have the rolling trays. Hey, Maestro, bring back. Shout out to Maestro, buddy. Uh, the DGC original grow journal. This is a badass Very grow cool. journal. Well, check out that. Check out that artwork there. Total maestro ass. It's adorable. <laughs> adorable. What? You got a skunk on a tricycle smoking. I love it. Classic DGC. Classic. Classic. So cool. Forward slash merch. Producers, don't forget to get your coupon code over on Patreon on the top of the post. And lastly. Check out our pros list, guys. Everything's listed for you guys. Oh, wait. You got the lighter bundle. Yeah. Don't forget, guys. It's called a lighter bundle but because it comes with a DDC one hitter. Yeah. We just can't show it. We can't say it. Right. <laughs> they get banned. <laughs> we, it's not just YouTube messing with the DGC. It's everyone. Just stay out oh of our gosh. hands. I'm so, yeah. Oh, prohibition is kind of alive on the financial side, right? So I can't. I'm banned from beating the credit card processor for like another four years. Damn. It's horrible. Uh, hey, dude, speaking of this, la- I was just going to yeah, say but, uh, like discrimination or one of weak cannabis discrimination. They have it when they're selling devices, too. I went to go buy one of these for nice guy, Kenny, the Luca. It's like a little dabber dealio. Seahorse. Seahorse. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, they have it on Amazon. Cool. I'll buy it. I, they had the image of it. And then it says Luca Seahorse Pro Plus Auto Pen Beauty Pen Kit. <laughs> wireless pen for face and body it's an electric heating element uh, you know it's it's not, that's how they, that's the don't hu- put it on your face nobody. but that the hoops that's the hoops you have to jump through to oh. sell something like this on amazon and Ooh. guess what i went to go give the link to grambo and it's already got yanked yeah you know it's already you know so yeah there is a lot of cannabis discrimination going on still mm-hmm. 
Well, and that's a, a if you're, I was going to say, if you're shot, that's a vaporizer just to, for concentrates. Yeah. yeah, it's a little, it's really efficient. If you, you know, whatever, if you get expensive concentrates, this is some shout out to some hot rod stuff. Mm. And I, I cherish it, you know, so I just put a little tiny bit on a spoon and you can get a decent amount of hits off it with one of these. 50 bucks. What is like a, a it's a, I call it like an electric dab straw, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like yeah, inexpensive device. But don't put it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> don't hit the wrong end. Or do. Yeah. Uh, we got comments coming up. I will mention. Um, no, I won't mention. We'll go right to comments here because uh, let's let's see what we got. So this is uh, featuring a few of the oh the dude. We keeping that dudes that grow show guys. We had a I love show it. on Monday. You I didn't thought it was really it, good. It wasn't recommended to you. You can be on our YouTube page and just click on the live tab. You'll find that show. We hung out with I Can THC, Rasta Jeff, Scotty, Grambo, myself, and had a panel of dudes that grow. Yeah. Do, do you write Joof? Great yeah. Story. That was cool, man. How do you take you take some of these comments? You, you got them and you... you, you, you oh, you man. I just... Asked. I just had to, to throw some love to Grambo. Just you've been huge, man. You've been here a year. And when we give you challenges, first off, you say, yeah, that sounds fun. Oh, yeah. And then you rise to the occasion and, and actually do a great job. No, I do a great job. So the live show is something that we have been working on. It was High C's idea. And the idea is just to share each other's audiences, introduce each other, and, uh, you know, hopefully other podcasters, Ross and Jeff. Uh, that's the idea. And I really enjoyed hanging out with everybody. But damn, you did a good job, Grambo. You made even made me look good. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was a super blast. We were flying. Me, me and Scott were exhausted at the end of the show we flying are. by the seat of our pants you know we've been doing dude grows i've been doing it a year you guys have been doing it a decade but this was the first uh live and so yeah it was cool ross to jeff brought the knowledge i can i love how great's matt Matt's he's man. cool man we gotta go out and hang and it's uh we're doing it every monday so 4 20 p.m yep. uh west coast time and uh yeah yeah but just cannabis agrees man great job guys excellent show with a ton of great info really appreciate all the great guests taking the time to share peace Tony Woody, Tony Woody says, great show, guys. Enjoyed the panel show. Uh, panel of Grow Pros. Keep up the great content. And I don't know, I just thought, I thought it was really cool. I wanted to make sure that you understood how much uh, the DGC appreciated and enjoyed that. Well, I, I epically appreciate all of you out there in the DGC land. And yeah, check it out if you haven't seen it. It's over in the live. You'll see home video shorts live. And that's us. Go better now is the thumbnail. And yeah, thank you guys. Excellent, man. And by the way, we, you know, this was the pilot. This is the first one. So mm -hmm. it's kind of on the down low. I don't think we uh, announced it too much or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, we left the mics on. Grambo went to go pee and we left the mics <laughs> live. <laughs> the worst and part is Scott goes, Grambo, are the mics on? I go, nope. Uh, no, and but then uh, the worst part was dude is up in Canada, so he was the last to know that the mics were hot. Uh, we had a good time, but man. it's all edited away, so you can't see it anymore. Oh, so if you it. wanted to see me crap in the bed, you should have been there live. Uh, David so. says, listening to y'all at the very beginning when you don't know you're on the air okay. is priceless. He said populated. <laughs> so, that's true. He, he, Scott asked me how the show's doing. I said, like, it's currently populating. <laughs> uh, Tim Turk says, I was bummed out when it was caught and stopped. It was just loud enough. It was great background conversation. Along with, and it was also very charming. <sighs> along with the Mr. Rogers piano and drum duo at the beginning and end. So mm -hmm. I just tight work, man. Very fun, very man. Very I'm very fun. embarrassed by that. That's the only bad spot as i crap the bed sorry at least we see we're such nice guys and we work with such nice guys that we can just have our back room conversation go to everyone uh, and it's actually okay because everyone's so nice yeah, yeah. that's so and so uh, guys if you're listening and you, well not if you're listening is that really a comment you're listening all right recommend <laughs> some guests for us hit us up on ig what is that a dm you're requesting uh, we want to rotate. We want to have people out in the com cannabis community on the panel. Yeah. Just always having a fun time. Tag us yes. on, on YouTube. I'll see those. If you ta tag us in the comments of other creators at Dude Grow Show, uh, I'll be tagged in it. I'll see it. So tag us on Instagram, Cat, Dude, Scotty. Tag any of us. We want to meet cool cannabis creators. You got an audience? Yeah. We want to talk to you. 
Hey, dude, do me a favor, man. And read a couple of these comments from. Remember, we were talking about the frost before the frost hit. How to how hits? How to speed up your flowering? There was some good stuff, yeah, I got man. You, yeah. Jerry H. They do surprisingly well with a little nip of cold. I've seen plants. This is outdoors. I've seen plants take overnight temps in the twenties and bounce right back. Interest. Be careful with that. I've heard of reports of this also in Colorado. So my best advice is to minimize wind chill by putting a bed sheet over it instead of plastic. Plastic kills. Hmm. Support with stakes and ties. Take it off at sunrise. Yeah, be in support with stakes and ties if you can have this just not obviously sitting right on your plant. Maybe there's just a little bit of a buffer air zone there. That'll also help as well. Um, uh, but yeah, I like that, Jerry H. <laughs> So I think my dog's just waking up. I thought Scott's slowly becoming Dr. Evil. Coco like, is snoring, sitting there with a, like a cat, like a dog instead of a cat. Like, Coco. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Smeez. 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 S-M-E-I-Z. Smeez. Smeez. We're talking about using winter frost towards the last few weeks, trying to help with senescence. He says, yeah. Or they say, yeah, I used winter frost. Last couple runs, you say it's snake oil for about two weeks, and then your eyes pop out of your head like WTF. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Interesting. Yeah. I was told uh, uh, by another grower that when I was concerned, and I think we've covered this on the show too, about being able to finish with grow dots and nutrition that's already in the soil. Because obviously as the grower using liquid nutrients, cut it right out like, bam, it's not there. Sure. Um, he's like, dude, winter frost tied with that. You're good to go. It's a great way. So I'm excited to play with that. Shout out to Jaron. And uh, yeah, get my finish on. I will say with here. the grow dots, yeah. as as the colder it gets, the slower and less it will release substantially. So uh, as things do get colder outside, those grow dots are going to very almost shut down the release. Well, and the other thing is people's environment. If you have the ability, yeah, like you said, we're not going to make it as cold as the outdoors. We covered a comment that said, hey, um, who I forgot who it was. Maybe it was Dr. Phil Good. Um, that, hey, by the time you're getting to 50 degrees, like basically your plants aren't metabolizing anything. It's That's shut just, off. Like it's just yeah. waiting. So, yep. um, yeah, bring in your temp down if you have the proper environmental controls in your grow room. My buddy that grows indoors with a mini split, not, buddy, not everybody has that luxury brings it all the way down to like maybe just the lower 60s the last week or so really and the plants just express a lot better yeah. one more comment tim turk this is regarding uh the indoor sorry ken uh ken tagger says this ken running abyss, the lights. Man. thank you ken abyss um you were talking about can we shorten the light cycle not just tw- maybe we do 13 off instead of 12 on uh, and help these plants finish quicker. If yeah. running the lights 11 on and 13 off during flower indoors will shorten the finish time. I heard that on one of Rasta Jeff's podcasts. Shout out, Grow From Your Heart podcast. I've yep. tried it, and it does shorten the flower time, but it will diminish yield some as there's less time for photosynthesis. Depends yep. on your priorities. Quick finish or bigger yield. So, I just uh, want a bigger the live yield. show. That makes sense when we brought up for the hell of it. Having fun. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The 18.6, the last 10 days of flower, um, and Ross and Jeff was saying, obviously, I mean, there's more photosynthesis. There's more energy for the plant. Not enough time for it to revert sex or term or anything. It's just so very interesting. And he also uh, said it's a a plant to plant, so strain dependent. So if you guys want to know more about that, check out the live show. Click the live panel, bro. It was a good episode. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. One more here. Good grow talk. Optimizing. This is regarding optimizing your cannabis container, figuring how, what pot size do you go with. An Eclipse says pot size depends on how big you want the plant, of course, to get. I've flowered in solo cups. I've never done that challenge. I um, mm. don't know if I want to. Uh, I've also flowered in one gallon, three gallon, fives and sevens, you name it. I had a pepper plant in a one gallon fabric pot for one full year. So it just depends on your space and size of the plant, really. I have also three pepper plants in one gallon rain science bags. I'll probably be in there for over a year. So a quick, like just a couple quick tips is I always, I give them that recharge hit once a week. That's to keep the media happy and just take care of excess news, organic matter. But man, if you keep that, it's, and they fruit like hell, man. I don't know if it's because they're fully rooted out in that one gallon. It is. So much fruit. Hey, they love yeah, it. Yeah, 
when you constrict the roots, they do have that as a technique uh, when, when doing peppers or in, in, when you're harvesting. It's like, I can't remember what they call it, but yeah, uh, they constrict the roots, man. I do have to water every day which might be the downfall to the one gals, but man, they stay happy in there. Three one gals and my two by four tent um, is almost the full canopy of, uh, just cause I'm proud, habanero, Carolina Reaper, and nice. scorpion. I'll have them all winter. Uh, what are you doing with them? What do you do? You mash them up and make sauce? Make a hot sauce? Uh, I dry, I make sauce, and then I got a buddy that is just not right sometimes. He'll, he'll eat all the way up to ghost straight up. He'll be like, oh yeah. Good. Wow. Um, and uh, so, yeah, a little barter and trade there. Sometimes I'm trading peppers for a little herb or a little hot sauce he has. But man, like I said before, I, people say it seems silly. That's valuable real estate. You can't get any fresh peppers like that anywhere I'm at. Nowhere That's damn near trading close. fresh Maybe cannabis for fresh hot sauce might be the coolest thing I've ever heard of, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> Hey, by the well, way, he's a grower too. Yeah, so no, that's a fresh, fresh, beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. I want some. But pounds of those peppers go for a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, they're expensive. Like those peppers, dry an ounce of those, you know, whatever. It's Reapers or whatever. Tons. No, they're not that much? Ten, Ten bucks, 15 Well, bucks, compared to cannabis, really? it's not that much. But compared to your average for, for an ounce, is only 10 bucks. If you look around, but how old are these? You don't get the same flavor. Right, right. Hang on, Google. I can find $10 eighths, but don't, <laughs> don't mean that it's good. <laughs> Um, oh, now would be a good time. Well, Scotty's looking around. Grambo on the fly. Check out our pros, guys. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. That's where all of our pros hang out, man. That's where we got coupon codes listed. DGC vetted gear growers. We got Canna, AC Infinity. Big shout out to AC Infinity. I got a bunch of gear coming from them, guys, and I'm starting my own grow diary. This is what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, my new grow is going to be like... I don't know. Is it was at the Mac Daddy Grow Shack or Daddy Mac. Either way, I think it works. <laughs> but it's going to be pimped out. The only thing that stresses me is I'm not an electrician, but I'm good at it. Is figuring out where I get all my outlets where I need to get all my outlets and cleanly. We can't just have cords around, okay? Um, Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. Coupon codes for everything. DDC Betty. Oh, Build a Soil. What's up? Shout out to Build a Soil as well. Uh, hey, with them outlets, with, with it just because it's a grow show, it's yeah. pretty much, it's not super tough to do all that stuff, but just making sure you get the right wire. You know, the right, they got Romex wire that's really easy to use, but just it comes in sizes depending on how much uh, power you want to push through there. And it's really easy See, for to me, run this stuff on the internet. running man. extension cords. All my high amp stuff is on a proper box with 220 and breakers, but right, I can run right. basically... Uh, I just got to go order up the, all the right, because who wants slack? You try to get the right length cord. I got four wall fans running this way. How can I make that look somewhat clean? Mm -hmm. You want your grow room to be clean. One reason, Absolutely. hey, it's five foot wide by 11 foot long, and it's going to be packed with plants. So when I move around in there, I don't want to be hitting any cables. I don't want to be messing shiz up. One reason I personally don't run irrigation, because I need to move my plants around. I don't want to kick an irrigation line, knock this emitter off. Um, so, yeah. And they, they don't make it. They don't make up. it easy. You do they do? Like when you go buy like good wire, the lower the gauge, the more it can handle. It's like it's such a weird number that they would give you. You know, so yeah, yeah. Make sure you pay attention when you do your power. That's one of the most important safety tips. Yeah. Thank you, Egon. But just the amount of amperage. Amperage is just the overall amount of power that you're pulling, and you just got to make sure that you have the right size wire for that stuff. Even the right size extension cords. That's why they got twelve dollar extension cords and hundred dollar extension and cords. power strips. You know, make yeah, sure your power thing. strip is rated good. You can have amazing wire coming out. Yep. It goes into Chinese crap, and then you they will melt. They will melt. They will melt. Yeah. I pulled a, one of my first early timers I ever had. It, it, I was running a lot of juice through it and I went to pull the timer out and it had, you know, the two pins in the ground. I pulled it. It was so hot. It, the pins stayed in the thing and they just <laughs> gooed out. And I was like, oh my God, yep. I'll never buy a cheap timer ever again. Yeah. I've had brown melting on mm -hmm. there. <laughs> you smell it. You smell, <laughs> it smell, it smells like burning. So spend the money, buy the right. It might Ooh. seem expensive at first, but buy the right electrical equipment the first time and don't have your house burned down am i mentioned i'm dog sitting yes not dog sitting but my wife is out of town so i am completely in charge of the dogs <laughs> hence why i have one on my lap right now this one likes to oh, snore a lot like it 
<laughs> Coco likes to sleep and snore a lot. <laughs> Just like her so, dad. The uh, there you go, pal. <laughs> uh, Is she news, snoring while she's oh. awake, actually, man? So I know a diet, dude. All right. A diet. No. Well, I, I have multiple fun things. Now, I wasn't going to say a diet. I say, I mean, the, the, their face kind of is just shoved into their face. So, yeah, yeah. Right. It's just the face shoved into a face. Yeah. I guess you're right, man. All right. No snoring. It's not snoring. It's just breathing. So Aww. let's take it to smoking weed after work. A growing number of employees don't mind. Oh, employers. Of course, the employees don't mind. Employers don't mind. This is out of the Washington Post. As more states legalize marijuana, employers are opting out of testing for the substance, either by choice as required by law. And even as required by law, some employers like, eh, they'll like give everybody a heads up. Make sure you bring in the Wizenator Wednesday. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, man. Yeah, this is about, I can tell you from being an employer that it's really important to get good quality people. Good quality people aren't just jumping out of the woodwork. Could you imagine? I mean, this would never happen in, only in the bizarro world where we had to find a producer to replace Guru. And we were like, dude, you just can't. You know, we, you can't uh, smoke weed. You know, you, you can't t- piss hot on a drug test or we can't hire you. It'd be Bye. ridiculous. You know how frustrating that would be? <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's so hard to get good people these days that and nobody really deep down inside cares about smoking weed anymore or if you smoke weed. So, yeah, I think the whole drug testing is a farce for the insurance. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. A, an example here. For uh, this lady, Shelly Pebbles, Peebles, I'll say Peebles, <laughs> found, awesome. a dental, found a dental hygienist job in Austin, Texas. She was thrilled. Her hours had been reduced at the company where she worked, and she needed a full-time job to support her two children. Everything was looking up until the recruiter said, we need a drug test. My heart sank, said Peebles, who turned to cannabis edibles in 2021 to help with shoulder and neck pain triggered by PTSD. I was worried I was going to have to give up a really great job to keep using my medicine. Um, so, and then, yeah, time needs to stop with that. Employers are getting it. And on the federal level and people that do hazmat, we've got some DGC in that arena. Um, and that's not going to stop probably for a while because they I don't, they can't figure out how to test since it's in your, your body for such an extended period of time. But, um, man, hey. that would be frustrating. Yo. And this says in Texas, medical use of cannabis products with low doses of psychoactive components known as THC is mm-hmm. legal. So they're saying you can get low THC products. They have medical in Texas where you can get low THC products, but it's not protected by employment laws. So you cannot be breaking any law, you know, you know, any law, but still as it's the employers or the whatever, it's a private corporation, mm, right? That's interesting. That's going to be the second phase of prohibition, isn't it? Like we're going to legalize and then employers are going to still be dicks about it. And I'm telling you, no way. You, they, we need they talent, better, man. We better. I mean, I hope I hope some legislation gets passed. The insurance companies have to chill out because, you know, that would suck. Hey, look, OK, next article, because things are changing. All right. All, All right. I can tell you is things are changing. All right. This is titled Jersey City Sues New Jersey as it looks to bar cops from cannabis use. Hmm. There's a whole controversy over whether cops in New Jersey City should be able to smoke off duty, which mm, they should. For sure. Check it out. Up until two years ago, Jersey City police were arresting people caught smoking marijuana. But now the cops are fighting for the chance to legally consume the drug while off duty. Huh. It's pretty crazy. Two years ago, you had to bust people for you know smoking weed, and now you can smoke weed and probably you know, maybe will. Well, it says this, yeah, the city fired five officers who tested pov- positive for using pot. Right, right. right. pot. Officials <laughs> made this decision because police officers are required to carry guns, which makes no sense. And when five people are fired off the force, you know all of them, or at least a few of them, that their counterparts are going to be like the peers and be like, "Why the heck did you fire Jim?" That makes no sense. He's been here right. for X amount of years. He's great on the job. Like, what is your guy's problem? So, of course, mm-hmm. it's grabbing their attention. And the, the the thing where they're saying because they carry a gun makes absolutely no sense. No. How much gun violence is associated with drinking or other things, but it's not associated with cannabis. 
But uh, think about how many cops drink. I mean, that's a tough job with a lot of, there's a lot of self-medicating going on there. Uh, if you could drink yourself to sleep or smoke a few joints and, and well, fade out. Yeah. I learned that, that typically, no, I shouldn't say that. It can be typically uh, alcohol is not self-medicating itself, like numbing if you're not careful with it. I think if you really know what? your way around how alcohol, what's that? I mean, it's definitely self-medicating. So is taking night, you know, whatever, or taking uh, sleeping pills or whatever. Um, well, I meant yeah. in a beneficial way. I mean, I don't. Yeah, think but I don't think that's. Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't think all. self-medicating is always positive. I guess is what I'm saying. Well, okay. Well, I was looking at the positive side of it, where yeah, like usually, since we say cannabis can give you compassion, thought, it, you might you might end up getting some resolve from your day or from an incident potentially. Um, verse where yeah. most of the time I think you're just getting numbed to it from alcohol. Yeah. Um, so, all right, I like it. Good news. Let's do. Uh, hey, we got a few before we we got some good memes to look at here. A few more shout outs because we got some good names for the producers, Scotty. I'm gonna let you take these first first three here because they lined up. Somebody lined them up good. Was that Jr.? I guess so. That is pretty funny, man. Because you got what smell, Dr. Proctor? It's the neighborhood skunk, man. It ain't me. It's the neighborhood skunk. Uh, ready? That could be a whole story, man. What smell? Dr. Proctor comes over, asks the neighbor, what smell? And then he goes, it's the neighborhood skunk. Yeah, it makes sense, man. I like it. I like it's a whole it. Story. I'll take it over with not as good of a storyline, but Captain Crunch, I did like that. I was down with the berries, peanut butter Captain Crunch. I liked that when I was a kid. My parents told me it was fortified, uh, as well as <laughs> Potion Onyx. Steve, been a minute, man. Still yeah. hanging in time, I hope. You gotta no, reach out, I, back no, he's back. Show. I'm pretty sure he's back. Yeah. And, man, you want to talk about somebody, you're invited on the panel show. You'd be excellent. Yeah. Yes. I wonder if he ever changed his look, if I'd even recognize him. Such a uh, That'd be <laughs> awesome. Imagine him all prepped out, you know. No. Yeah, I got uh, into Bitcoin in Wall Street, man. <laughs> grow mom. <laughs> Let us know. Reach hey. out. What's the grow mom? Uh, how did your outdoor harvest go down? I think it should be down now. Maybe you've probably been in trim jail, but let us know. I'd be curious to know. Sending Bectopia was helping out grow mom um, to get a good harvest. And that's what it's about is also when you become a DDC producer, there's such a great community hanging out over in Discord. Producers help and producers over on Patreon, dudegrows.com forward slash support. As I said earlier, it would not be a Dude Grow show without you guys. Thank you. For real? How about, can I give an Ollie G respect? Remember Ollie G? Yeah. Can I give respect to Ollie G? That was a great, yeah. God, that was good when it came out. Man. How did Remember he, he just go like that? <laughs> I rolled the joint. How did he get access? It was so crazy. It was so cool, man. Uh, hey, dude, I got if can I actually make you laugh or make you think <laughs> on social media? This one's a thinker. Me and JR were talking. He goes, JR Token's like, did you see the uh, flying car? And I'm like, what? He goes, this is the first one that looks kind of like a car. Mm -hmm. It is a flying electric car. And it says, what did it say? It's a proof. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's that's a, like the Batmobile. It's a drone shaped car. It's a car-shaped drone, rather. But you fly in it, right? Well, it is, and you don't need a pilot's license. You just need a drone operator's license. It's insane. <laughs> and they're only like, I mean, I say only, but they're $300,000, which means a lot of people are going to figure out how to get these, right? Yeah, you and the 300 friends put in 1000 <laughs> No, nah, they just like take a second either. mortgage on the house, stuff like that, you know? Crazy. It says approved by the FAA. I don't believe it. Like, how did it, because can it only go a foot off the ground? I don't um, know, but this is one of them I love nuts to know, you know? I just want to, uh, I mean, this is like the next way to break out of prison. Easy. <laughs> just fly in. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just cool. It's like a fantasy right now. I love it. It's the I don't want to know it's any, the, uh, any other details except you can buy, you can pre-order a flying car for $300,000. Jesus. <laughs> I thought this was a pun. It says Marty McFly. I thought it was like saying like, you're looking Marty McFly. Like looking good. <laughs> oh, that's not bad, grandma. You should use that. You should use. Hey, do me a favor. Just, memes here. Yeah, it's called the memes, man. What I got it? the first one. I, yeah, I love Thundar. it. Thunder. Yeah, this says I got Thunder. Other bar Bud Berrien says I caught two kids smoking pot outside my office. Ten minutes later, 
my boss caught me and two kids. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. Lunchtime. It's called lunchtime. Oh, Thundar always bringing the thumb. Oh, yeah. These are good. Thundar's killing it. This country. Yeah, there's a one. few of them. <laughs> It's, that's just rude, but I agree. <laughs> if country one, music guys. was a joint, it says. If country music was a joint, it's just stems and seeds mm. and. Oh, <laughs> that's God, rude, but I agree. Funny. My wife listens. This is what to I felt about car somewhat uh, recently yeah. when it seemed like they're trying to make country music and rap mix, and I was like, "What are you doing? Oh, what is God. this?" I can't My opinion. even think about that. Man. What what do we got, man? What do we got? He had a couple of good ones, man. As uh, Dundar's, if not, I'm not going. And it's, I don't know, they're in some kind of crazy suit. It looks like Samuel L. Jackson, actually. Who is that, man? What movie is that? I haven't seen it. Man. Yeah, anyway, when we first make contact with the aliens, and it says, Do you have marijuana up there, motherfucker? <laughs> 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 Oh, that's a good line reading, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. It is Samuel L. Jackson, Not, no? Yeah, what's well, crudely cropped of his hat. Yeah. yeah. It's from, uh, I think, that Contact movie. Yeah, damn it. Now I screwed up our age gating, right? Uh, Maybe they'll think it was Samuel L. Jackson instead. Man. <laughs> is that it, man? Those are funny. Yeah, what else you got? Yeah. Yeah, autism dad. Do we do this first? This one, uh, uh, keep going, Grandpa, right here. <laughs> Looking at just... This guy, middleman, shrugging his shoulders. Says, hey, hang on a second. A middleman. Dude has no idea who that is, man. He thinks he's just a random it's dude. It's Kevin James. Dude's like famous, know, man. Brother. All right. It's Joe Rogan's best friend. <laughs> he looks a little like Joe he's Rogan, doesn't he? They're actually best friends, too. Well, more of an actor or a comedian? Or both. Comedic both. actor. Started as a stand-up, became a comedic actor. Wait, the King of Queens was his show? Yeah, knockoff of Everyone Loves Raymond. Leah Ramini. All right. Hey, that shows, isn't that show not really cheesy, if I remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, cheesy. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this Is guy. that where you just take the payment because the contract's so good and you're willing to accept it? Oh, yeah. Cheesy. Yeah. That's yeah. um, big money. Big money. Yeah. Uh, it says when you're the middleman and they brought a scale. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a half gram short. I don't know. Oh, God. God, that's awesome. I don't miss those days. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You sure the bag doesn't exactly. weigh the half gram more? It's only a gram short on a pound, man. Is that a big deal? Ah, uh, no, a gram short on a quarter. <laughs> Yeah, I had a guy. Days. I had a guy that it was short five grams on a pound, and he was mad. And I was oh, like, police! <laughs> Go check out our last show if you haven't seen it. The live show is great. Tony the Tiger says, "I don't do enough just like him." And uh, don't forget about comment, like, subscribe if you had a good time today, and stay higher. Just stay higher, Grandma Scotty. Peace out. Till next time, we'll be coming at you. Till next time. Hey, till next time. Take her easy, dude.